Hey, I'm Nicole Ferraro, a contributing editor at Light Reading. Welcome to What's the Story, a short podcast where we take a step back from the most significant topics in telecom to tell you the latest news, how we got here, what it all means, and what to expect next. This week on the show, we're talking with Light Reading's Mike Dano about Dish Network. Mike recently reported on developments around Dish's official entrance into the wireless market and new vendors for its planned 5G network. Mike is here to tell us what this all means, why it matters, and what's likely to come next. All right, Mike, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So what's the story with Dish Network? I would say it's probably one of the most interesting stories in the wireless industry um, for the past at least couple of years. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this story because it's the story of a, a desperate underdog run by a professional blackjack player that is trying to upend the status quo. It's just, it's got all the right elements in it. So um, I was thinking about this. I think the really, the Dish story starts about 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago when Dish companies started buying Spectrum. And, uh, you know, they were just some random satellite TV company, but they, over the course of several like major billion dollar transactions, they just bought a crap ton of wireless Spectrum in a bunch of different, um, Spectrum auctions and different transactions. So, um, and and sort of everyone was wondering what the heck is Dish doing with all this Spectrum? Why are they buying Spectrum? And they just did that for years and years uh, under Charlie Ergen, who is the, the 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 main guy over at Dish. And so all of that came to a head last year because T-Mobile and Sprint were trying to merge. And they were working with the Department of Justice to get antitrust approval for that merger. And the Department of Justice did not want to give them that because what it would do is redu- it would reduce the number of uh, players in the wireless industry from four to three. And DOJ didn't want to approve it because of that. Well, here comes Dish, like with all their spectrum. And Dish basically said, we will be the fourth player. We'll replace Sprint. If you allow T-Mobile and Sprint to merge, we'll replace Sprint as the fourth player nationwide wireless provider with all this spectrum that we've been buying. And so basically Charlie Ergen swooped in and saved the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, you know, with this big promise. And, uh, you know, it was all this like complex negotiations and all these terms and conditions that had to happen. Well, that all uh, essentially fell into place last week. Like the final or one of the final, you know, elements of that transaction uh, happened, it closed. And so now, as of uh, last week, Dish is officially a uh, provider in the wireless industry. So they've still got a long way to go. But like, that was kind of the one the big one that everyone was waiting for was, are they going to are they going to make close that transaction with with T-Mobile and buy boost? And they did. Thank you so much for that context. Um, so why do you think Dish is interested in building a 5G network to begin with? And what, what are the broader implications of all of this for the industry at large with regard to Dish's moves in, in wireless right now? Oh, yeah. H- huge implications. Huge implications, but also a crazy number of questions because, you know, so the, the thing that Dish did last week was all they really did is that they're, they're, they have um, the ability to sell T-Mobile's service. So they, they basically became an MVNO of T-Mobile, which just means that they are they have access to T-Mobile's network and they're able to sell access to T-Mobile's network to their own customers as a T-Mobile MVNO. So really, you know, they don't have a network. They're not, they have not replaced Sprint as a, as a fourth nationwide wireless network operator. All they've really done is become, um, is entered the wireless industry by selling wireless service under the Boost brand um, and that brand just operates on T-Mobile's network. So that's really all that happened. So, so it is a major step, but it's, you know, one of many steps that they're going to need to take. Uh, and there's still questions as to whether or not they're actually going to take all those big steps. Now, here's the thing though, is that if Dish does take all of the steps that they have said that they're going to, eventually they'll become another 5G provider with their own 5G network. Um, 
it'll take them years and years to get there, but that's what that's the path that they're on, and they just crossed a major marker to get there. And so the implications and ramifications are huge because they could be another company that that operates a 5G network. They could directly challenge T-Mobile and Verizon and AT&T, you know, in the 5G area. And the most important thing is that they could do that by uh, operating a network that has no customers on it Um, and a crap ton of spectrum that Charlie Ergen has been collecting over the past decade. And so, you know, if you think about an industry where, you know, there's three providers and they all have 5G networks and they're all, all those networks are pretty loaded down with a bunch of customers, right? Uh, And they're sort of saddled with all this legacy equipment that they've been managing over the past 20 or 30 years, right? Well, DISH has none of that. They don't have any customers. They can build their network with all the fanciest brand newest, you know, antennas and whatever else. Um, and so they they really do have the opportunity of coming into a, an, an industry with something that no one else has, which is a, a, you know, completely empty spectrum that they can do whatever they want with it, with all the fan, most fancy equipment. So that's the that's the DISH argument you know, that, that they're going to really shake up the industry. And I'm, I'm sure you can imagine all the arguments against that. You know, they don't have any experience here. They don't have any customers. They don't have any revenue. They've got a lot of things that they are going to need to buy before they get to this point uh, where they're even offering service. Uh, and they're going to face some really established and competitive companies, you know, in terms of trying to get customers. So a lot of obstacles against them, but you know, uh, for anyone who likes an underst- underdog story uh, and is interested in finding out how, uh, you know, some a, a person, uh, Charlie Ergen, at one point in his career was a professional blackjack player. And so, you know, the idea of this upstart underdog fronted by a professional, former professional blackjack player challenging companies, some of the biggest companies in the, in the country and in the world, you know, with its own fancy 5G network, like, this is these have all the elements of a really interest. So I I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but I'm very interested to watch what what goes down. Um, yeah, so am I. Thank you so yeah. much for all of that. But I, I know you can't really tell the future. But what stories are you going to be keeping your eye on uh, as it relates to this topic in the coming yeah. weeks and months? Because there's certainly a lot to pay attention to. Funny you ask. I'm literally this afternoon sitting down to write the fact that. So, so uh, I think estimates are around Charlie Ergen has spent $20 billion on Spectrum over the past decade. Uh, one thing that is interesting is that they, he, he, even that has not satiated his uh, 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 thirst for additional Spectrum because as part of the purchase of Boost that happened last week, um, he's agreed to buy, I think it's almost $4 billion more of Spectrum from T-Mobile. So, you know, that's just crazy to me that he he still wants more. He's still not happy. He wants more billions of dollars worth. And that transaction has not yet closed. And who knows if it will. But he, he certainly agreed to to, to uh, engage in negotiations for that additional spectrum. So, you know, there's one thing. Another thing is that he's putting together this team of people who are supposed to build this 5G network. And uh, I think it's interesting to look at who those people are. So. Uh, over the next week or so, I'm going to write that story. So there's another there's another thing for the who's ever interested in going to the lightreading.com and finding out who these people are who are basically going to be given a checkbook of ten billion dollars to buy equipment. Who who are these who are these people like that? Well, I'm going to write that down about who are all these people that are going to spend all this money to to build this network. Um, you know, and then uh, uh, further down the road, we'll see what kinds of uh, service pricing uh, dish will introduce to the wireless industry, you know, uh, uh, through their boost brand and eventually through other brands potentially. Um, And then, you know, further down the road this year, they're going to probably start testing a 5G network in certain cities and they're going to have to buy a core network to get it all up and running. And um, they'll start installing transmitters on towers. And, you know, that whole build out process is something that we'll track over the next several years. Uh, and then, you know, when they actually start putting customers on their 5G network, if they do get to that point. Uh, and then there's uh, plenty of theories about eventually they'll be acquired by a cable company like uh, Comcast or Charter. 
you know, that's sort of further out. Um, but if that does happen, uh, there's, I think that's a, there's certainly a strong argument to be made for that to go down and, and that, you know, we'll see if that happens, but, uh, if it does, it would certainly be, uh, something that it would be interesting and I'm sure we would cover on light reading. Um, but yeah, a lot of interesting stuff over the next couple months and years. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. We'll definitely be keeping up with your stories about all of this. And thank you for taking the time. I enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mike Dano, for taking the time to talk with me today. We will definitely be looking to you to keep us updated on all things DISH. Thank you to our producer, Tian Fu, for making this episode, and thank you, all of you, for listening. If you like what you heard, please leave us a review, share this episode with a colleague or friend, and subscribe to the Light Reading Podcast for more interviews and insights from the team. That's the story for now. We'll be back next week.